Hello everyone, Ashley here, and welcome to today's video, which is part two of making our pizza box sketchbook. Um, if you happen to miss part one, um, it is in the, um, my tutorial, I have, I have playlists and it is going to be in the tutorial playlist, but it's also, if you go to, you know, it, it'll be the latest video that I posted. <laughs> So um, if you would like, I can also leave the link down below, which I will do. So um, if you'd like to watch the first one and get caught up on what we're making, um, that link will also be down below. And let's see. Okay, so today we are going to be adding the signatures in. So we're going to be focusing on the paper. The last um, video was just making it, getting the cover cut out, painting it, and getting that all set up. So... The first thing I did, of course, with my old sketchbook that I did not like was rip out all the pages. And um, this one got a little damaged, so I didn't even include it. Um, so I ripped all the pages out. And okay, so I did do a lot of these steps here um, just off camera, just because I didn't want it to be a forever long video. So, but I saved um, like each step I saved saved things. So I'm still going to be able to show you guys and walk you guys through every single step um, because I didn't complete it. So I ripped the pages out on my sketchbook and of course I fold them. Just get it lined up as best as I can. And then I take my bone folder. I have a bone folder. I got it off Amazon. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's really inexpensive, but if you happen to not have one, this just makes the um, edge a lot crisper. So I just run it along my folded edge. If you don't have one of these, you can use your scissors even. You can use this part of your scissors and just run it along just like that. And it works about the same. So you, this is not, you know, a necessary thing you have to have for this. So you have them all folded. And then these are just a few extras that I had. And I actually have three here. So I could have added it into my book, but I'm not going to because I have plenty. But um, you may have some extra pages, which I like to use for just having little extra um, individual sheets. Um, so those are kind of good and handy to have. But what I do after I have all my pages ripped out and folded, I'll go through and I will group them together into signatures. I typically, just so it's not so thick in each signature, I typically do four. Sometimes like in junk journals and stuff, I'll do more than that. But for a sketchbook, I'll typically do four of them. And you can see how it kind of um, like, so it, you know, each page you put in here, it gets thicker a little bit right here and it starts pushing the pages outward. So they will start having this edge. And that's kind of one reason why I don't use so many pages per signature, just so this doesn't get so bad. But I have also done it in the past where I will take my, my, blade, my razor blade and I will, you know, line up my ruler like this and just cut that part off. I didn't do it this time though because it's not it's not a big deal for when it's just something I'm using for personal use. So I didn't mess with that this time, but that is an option you can do if you prefer to have that straight edge. I also, another tip, when I cut this part off, I will also go through with a, I have a little sand block and I will just sand it down a little bit to make it feel a lot smoother. So that's something you can also do as well. Um, okay, so once I have my signatures, so let's say I have my stack of signatures over here. So I've got my signatures. I have a couple here too. Of course, I'm not adding this one, like I said, but you have your signatures all folded and put together. Then what I do is I take my cover, and again, I'm not showing, I'm, I will show you how I did it, but you can see I've got my, my holes. I did get my holes done, and how I did this was... I kind of play a guessing game on some of it, but I line up my pages, my signatures in here and get them exactly where I want them. And I will mark a top line with a pen or pencil. I will mark a middle and mark a bottom and I will go straight across with my ruler. So I would take my ruler, I'd have my pages here, 
and I do a little mark and then move my pages out, put my ruler here and I will make a straight line going across for both top, middle and bottom. And then <laughs> this is where the guessing game part comes into play. So I know I had 10 signatures and to get them as evenly as possible, I, because my spine was actually a little bit bigger than um, I normally probably would have done, but I'm actually liking this. So I had a little extra wiggle room. So what I did was really kind of space those holes out a little bit more. So that way um, they weren't like all smooshed together, you know, like this. They're, they have more room, which is cool too, because then I can go in and add different things, maybe bulk it up a little bit if I want to. I have that option, so I'm kind of liking it. Um, but after I get that line across, I guessed at where my first set of holes are going to go. And thankfully, I was able to actually, you know, I stayed really well on that line I made, and I was able to space them out pretty good to where it doesn't look too bad. So I started with the one on the outside and I'll hold my book like this. And this is what I use to make my holes. <laughs> I don't, a lot of people use an awl um, and I do not actually have one. This is just a piercing tool that came in a little set at, from the Dollar Tree actually. But I used to, use, well, I still use it. Um, but I have this here, it's We Are Memory Keepers. It's one of those crocodile chomper things. <laughs> and it does a couple things, it sets eyelets down here, but then it has these hole punches and it's got a big one and a little one. I use the smallest one, which is the one eighth. And you can see it right here. This is the smallest hole, but still sometimes for my projects, it's still a little too big for it, like bigger than what I would prefer. So in that instance, I just use this <laughs> and I just went through and I started, I made my first one here, and then I made, so I made my first one, then I made this one here, my last one, and then I just slowly worked my way and tried to space them out as best I could. And once I was, I got them spaced out, then I took my ruler after that, and you can see it here, actually. Oh, maybe you can see it on the camera, I hit the hand, but if not, what I did was I took my ruler from that first one and just made a mark all the way down, all the way down through there. That way the rest of my holes would line up with my the first hole I have up here at the top. So that's how I did that. And then I went through and I just went to, you know, punch them all. And once you have all, your, all those holes punched, I then took my stack of papers, my signatures, and I lined them up like this and got them all nice and even. And I took my ruler again and lined it up like this. Well, let me get my non-rounded in down there. Okay. I had them, I had my signatures all nice and even, and I went like this. And right where that hole's at, I made marks with my pen right there, and then in the middle and the end. So you can see them on these last two here. So I've got my I've got my marks on my signatures right there. And now all I'd have to do is punch the holes in these. I can't remember if I did, did I punch? No, I didn't. Okay, so now we are going to punch the holes in my signatures here. And how I do that is I just kind of open it up and I make sure that my, make sure it's still all in the crease, like I've got my Got them all lined up in there because you don't want them to be all wonky. Take my little piercer and I go right where that dot's at that I've made. I'm gonna pierce it. And I kind of make it a little bit bigger. I have to because the needle I use is bigger than a typical needle. It's a darning needle, which is also good because it's not sharp on the end. So it's not gonna poke me. <laughs> so, um, I have to just kind of wiggle this around just a little bit. And again, it's just because of this is what I'm using. I think alls are a little bit bigger than this, um, but I make this work for me. I um, I kind of prefer the smaller hole just because my signatures aren't going to be moving around as much because when you have a bigger hole, they can kind of like be a little wobbly. 
um, even after you tie the knot in them and stuff, they can kind of be that way a little bit. So, okay. So I've got one done. I'm gonna do my next one. And same thing, gotta make sure my pages are still lined up pretty well. And then I'm gonna poke my hole right where my dot's at that I made. Wiggle it around a little bit. Okay, I'm losing my alignment, there we go. And another tip I will say is if for some reason, like since I kind of eyeball my first row of um, holes um, at the top, I kind of eyeball it. Um, but if for some reason it totally does not look even, like sometimes, you know, one time I had it where they just, they weren't in a straight looking line. They were kind of wonky. I was still able to get my signatures in fine and everything, but you can cover up the spine with just a piece of fabric. So instead of having an exposed spine like this, I will take say like the same material as this that I have for the ribbons and I will glue a piece down to cover all that. So then you don't have to worry about that. So that kind of takes the pressure off of making it perfect. Okay, get these, they're going the right way here and get them lined up. Okay, so we have our holes and our signatures now. So now what I'm gonna do is take my string and I use typical, like this is actually, I forget what it was even called. Um, I forget what they called it, but it's just your typical like friendship bracelet string or whatever that's called too. I'm totally not even remembering the name of this stuff, but I used to make those friendship bracelets with a string and this is just like basically a big spool of that. And you can use all sorts of different things. I've seen people use ribbons and all sorts of, I don't know, all sorts of things with junk journal type stuff. But if you find string like this, this is just what I use, a smaller string. And I'm going, and it's really tough too. But I'm just going to, you kind of measure your signature with it a little bit and do like one, two, don't get stuck please. <laughs> one, two, three and like a little extra just so you have enough and I cut that one and then I just take that string and I kind of measure out the rest the rest that I need I just need two so I'm just gonna get my second one here okay now I'm gonna get my needle and again I've got my darning needle here and see it's it's blunt right here so it's not sharp at all so I'm not gonna hurt myself, which is awesome. I'm really, needles like scare me because I always end up getting myself and I'm like, Ugh. I just do not like working with needles very much. Okay, so this is a three hole plant, they call it the three hole pamphlet stitch, I think, because you have your three holes here and what you do is you start in the middle, so you put your needle through there, grab your cover, and find the hole you need, stick it right through that middle spot, pull it all the way through. You want to leave a tail on the inside, so I'm going to leave this whole section right there. Then I'm going to go up into the top hole, if I can get that there, there we go. You go up through the top hole, still leaving the tail behind. And then you go down into the bottom. A little tough there. Okay. Then down into the bottom one. And then you go back through that middle one. And when you're in the middle, you want to have your tail that you left in here on one side of this little string right here, your middle string, the bridge. <laughs> you want to leave one string over here, and then when you pull this through, you want to leave the other string on the other side. This way, when you put your knot in here and you tie it, the knot is going to keep this part nice and snug in there and all tied up. So that way your signature stays in and isn't moving around a lot. I also, before I tie it, make sure that I got it in the right holes, because I've done it once where I got, you know, through here okay, but then my other one was like over in this other hole so be careful of that always check it before you tie and then I just pull real tight 
and I will do a knot over my left finger and then I will do another one over my right finger just so it's two different ways of securing that string in there and the signature and it's nice and snug and I move on to the next one get my needle get my string and we'll walk you through this again grab my paper Make sure my holes are lined up. Yep, okay. You can tell when your holes are lined up if you have your middle line up a little bit further too or down, like not necessarily right in the middle. And then you can line your signatures up perfectly too. Cause like if it's, if it's wrong, my holes are not gonna line up. That middle one's like clear down here. <laughs> so this is the way it needs to go. Again, here we go. We're gonna go right in the middle and sometimes there. Sometimes I have to push that needle in a little bit more, but just because I use such a smaller hole puncher <laughs> than my big crop crocodile one. I'm going to go through the top. So through the middle, through the top. Get my go through there. Always leaving that one tail in there. And then we're gonna go through the bottom. And then we're gonna go, excuse me, ribbon. And then we're gonna go back through that middle section. Get through there, please. Come on, okay. And then again, once we're back in that middle section, we make sure you have the one string over on this side underneath the little bridge area. Pull that needle through, pull the needle off, get the, you know, you have one string on either side. I check to make sure everything's all good back here. Yes, it is. And then I pull real tight because we want that, I want it to not be all wobbly on me. So I'm gonna pull it real tight here. One knot over my left finger, one knot over my right, okay, and sometimes, now what I like to do is, sometimes I'll leave the strings hanging down here at the bottom, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm still going to leave enough in here just in case something's loose or something, maybe I can tie it back again or whatnot, so I just leave a little bit in there. I'm going to cut a little bit off on this one. Okay. And there it is. Here's what the spine looks like. And again, if you don't like the exposed spine, you can take a piece of fabric and glue it down to cover it up if you want to. I actually don't mind it. And I think they actually turned out decent. <laughs> it always worries me when I second, or when I, um, Play the guessing game for that top row. I'm like, oh, I hope I get it all even, but I didn't do too bad this time, so I'm really happy about that. Um, and my signatures are all in there nice and even. So here's my little sketchbook. Now, now I've got one that I like a little better, and what I like too about it is it'll lay nice and flat for me, and I can work work in it so much better than having that spiral, which I do not like at all. So. And the cool thing is too, is that I was originally thinking about maybe adding a little bit more bulk to the cover just to make it a little stiffer and thicker, but I actually like it this way because it kind of moves with me a little bit. And I mean, it's, it's thick enough here that it keeps everything supported and in there, but I really like that I just have, it just stays so nice and flat for me. It's like, this is awesome. So I, I really like this so much better. Um, and I can go back and I might I might add pockets or do different things on the inside to make it look a little better. And again, I might add stickers or collage the front. But as far as the construction goes, there it is. There's my new little sketchbook. <laughs> so I hope you guys um, enjoyed this little tutorial. And if you guys do, um, I don't know, maybe I'll do something like this again in the future with something else. I don't know, you never know what may happen. <laughs> It is fun making them. I do enjoy it. And um, so that is all for today's video, guys. And um, 
yeah. I'm getting distracted here now because now I can't like wait to create in this thing. But um, I hope you guys all have such a beautiful day and thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching this video and I will catch you guys all in the next one. Bye!